when a federal appeals court a few weeks ago struck down Arizona's law banning abortion at 20 weeks, said that that ban was unconstitutional. House Republicans responded by proposing a ban like that for the whole country. Arizona Congressman Trent Franks would ban abortion nationwide at 20 weeks. No, expe no exceptions for pregnancies that resulted from rape or from incest. The bill even specifically establishes a nationwide ban on having an abortion in the event that you find out that your fetus is non-viable. It cannot live. A, a determination of that sad circumstance is often not made until 20 weeks into the pregnancy. But if you find out tragically that the fetus has no brain or no skull or its lungs are not going to be developed and it cannot survive, Trent Franks, his nationwide abortion ban would apply to those cases specifically as well. So if your doctor tells you that your pregnancy cannot produce a baby that will live, Republican Congressman Trent Franks of Arizona will nevertheless force you to carry the non-viable fetus to term and go through childbirth because he says so. Nationwide, no exceptions. A woman cannot make that decision herself. She cannot make that decision with her family or with her doctor. Trent Franks will decide that for you. That passed out of the Trent Franks subcommittee on a party line vote with all the Republicans voting in favor. It is expected now to pass the full Judiciary Committee tomorrow with, again, all of the Republicans voting in favor. And then Eric Cantor says that he will put it on the House floor next week for a full House vote, which will undoubtedly pass because Republicans have the majority in the House and they want to vote for this. It will not become law because Democrats will not let that happen either in the Senate or in the White House. But still, this is what Republicans are doing with the power that they've got in the House of Representatives. With their power that they've got in the states, actually they're even being more aggressive. Republican governance in Wisconsin has already closed half the clinics in that state that provide abortions because they defunded Planned Parenthood and it had that effect. Now anti-abortion activist Republican Governor Scott Walker says he looks forward to signing a bill soon that will take the same trap law strategy as Mississippi and North Dakota have taken recently to try to close as many more of the remaining clinics in Wisconsin as he can. The bill he says he will sign would also force Wisconsin women to undergo a mandatory state-ordered medically unnecessary ultrasound as a sort of penalty or punishment for seeking an abortion. Whether your doctor thinks you need one or not, whether you want one or not, Scott Walker and Wisconsin Republicans will force you to undergo that medical procedure by order of the state government. That bill in Wisconsin passed committee on a party line vote. It's headed for the full Senate where Republicans are in the majority and so it's expected to pass. Same deal happening in Ohio, where the Republicans just passed a budget that not only defunds Planned Parenthood, it also just directly tries to shut down Ohio clinics, too, with another one of these trap laws with which Republicans are now shutting down clinics all across the country. The Republican-controlled Ohio Senate passed this thing. It now goes to the Republican-controlled Ohio House as of tomorrow. And then when they presumably pass it, it will go to the Ohio Republican governor. So I don't mean to presume here, but say goodbye to access to abortion in Ohio as well as Wisconsin. Anywhere that Republicans are in control, really. But Iowa, actually, Iowa is really the most amazing one of all of them right now. Meet Terry Branstad. I always like to show a picture of Terry Branstad whenever we talk about him and all Iowa politics, because something about the way he looks is more memorable for some reason than just the sound of his name, which nobody ever seems to be able to remember. I think it's the, probably the memorability of his mustache that I'm fixating on. But regardless, this is the governor of Iowa. This is what he looks like. He looks a lot like a famous children's TV character from the 1970s named Captain Kangaroo. But he is not Bob Keeshan playing Captain Kangaroo. He is Terry Branstad playing governor of Iowa, playing doctor. In his capacity as governor of Iowa, Terry Branstad reserves for himself, personally, the right to decide whether or not you get an abortion. He says he will sign legislation just passed by the Iowa legislature that gives a personal role in deciding on a case-by-case -case basis whether he will allow Medicaid to cover your abortion, if that is your health insurance in the state of Iowa. The provision in which Governor Terry decides what happens to you is part of an overall Republican crackdown on access to abortion in Iowa. But the specific decision on Medicaid covering abortion because you have been raped or because you were the victim of incest or because the pregnancy might kill you or the fetus is non-viable and will not live, those decisions, those decisions will not be made by you in, by Iowa, in Iowa. They will not be made by your doctor. They will not be made even by state law. Those decisions, henceforth, once he signs this thing he says he wants to sign, those decisions will be made personally by him, individually. He says he will sign that bill this week. He told reporters on Friday that he promises to be 
very thoughtful in making that decision on your abortion as he handles those decisions one by one, personally. If the Republicans' devotion to this cause right now is insufficiently clear, consider also the next national bill they are moving on on this subject, one that would ban women who are detained on an immigration violation from having access to an abortion while they are detained. Now, there are exceptions to this. Employees who work at immigration detention facilities, even if they had no medical training, would be left to decide if it seemed to them like not having this abortion might kill you. So maybe they might let you have one in that case, but even then, maybe not. And what do they know? They don't have any medical training. Republicans passed that in committee on Friday, nationally, and it is steaming forward as part of the overall bill funding homeland security for the whole country. Because that is essentially what they are working on. They are winning back the women of America by focusing like a laser on the most aggressive and ambitious and relentless anti-abortion agenda that we have seen in this country since Roe versus Wade. They are focused like a laser on jobs, jobs, job abortion, every, 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 every day, coast to coast. Joining us now is Cecile Richards. She's president of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Ms. Richards, thanks very much for being here. Yep, good to see you. Are things actually uh, getting getting worse right now in 2013? Are we just hearing less about it because we're more sort of inured to the aggressiveness of this agenda? We're seeing a record number of bills introduced and passed and signed. And just looking at your sort of list here of terribles, one of the most extraordinary things, of course, is every single one of the people you mentioned who are forwarding these bills and signing them, none of them will ever be pregnant. Yeah. And the thought that these men are now going to make decisions for women uh, about their pregnancies is incredible. And particularly after we went through an election in which the American people spoke loud and clear, women and men in this country, which is they believe these decisions should be made by women and their families, not by politicians. Some of the... Um one of the things that we have seen is that um, bills and approaches to policy that have been effective at cur curbing access to safe and legal abortion in some states, like trap laws in Mississippi, for example, right. uh, shutting down clinics in that state, um, we're seeing other states copy those. But we're also seeing some innovation. I mean, I've never, ever seen anything before where a male governor decides that he will personally make the decision about whether or not people have abortions in his state. We've never seen anything like this either. I, mean, I think that the creativity and the insidious nature of the kind of things that, that are being introduced and passed and signed, that's what's extraordinary to me, yeah. uh, and signed, uh, is like nothing we've ever seen. And, you know, the incredible thing is, and you mentioned the state of Wisconsin, where we've had health centers shut down, uh, health centers that provide nothing but family planning. The risk is not only that women are losing access to safe and legal abortion in states, they're losing access to health care across the board. In Ohio, again, the, the, the budget that, they're, that they are uh, you know, debating on signing would actually end women's access to family planning, uh, would end access to Planned Parenthood for a whole host of preventive care as well. And that, again, I think is the, the most insidious thing about all of this, is the same folks who are trying to restrict women's access to safe and legal abortion also want to restrict their access to birth control. It doesn't make any sense. The math does not work in right. that case. Uh, well, thinking about Planned Parenthood as an institution, obviously mm -hmm. you've attracted um, a lot of attention from Republicans, both in the states and federally, trying to both defund the organization, try to block any sources of funding for Planned Parenthood health centers, um, but also just attacking the organization um, institutionally as some sort of sim symbol of evil. How is Planned Parenthood doing organizationally? How are you weathering this? Well, the incredible thing is, every time they go after us, we get stronger. I mean, in the last couple of years, we've gained two million new supporters. At most, uh, hundreds of thousands of young people, young men and women, who are now have joined Planned Parenthood or are activists for Planned Parenthood. And I actually think that at the end of the day, some of these folks in office are going to pay the price at election time. Mm -hmm. the, Folks do not want to go back in this country to days before Roe, to days before birth control was uh, was legal and available and affordable. Uh, and so I actually feel like this is this is a this is not a long term strategy. It is, but it is very discouraging to see, particularly when there are so many Republicans who support Planned Parenthood, who are patients of Planned Parenthood, employees of Planned Parenthood, donors to Planned Parenthood, to see a very narrow group of politicians, extreme politicians, continue to go after women's health care access. It's crazy. I don't. It, the 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 only place I differ with you there is that yep. it doesn't feel like it's a narrow group. It feels like this has now become sort of the way that Republican governance works. This has become the new normal in the states. It was crazy when Mississippi decided to come up with this variation on a trap law right. that was going to close down the last clinic in the state. Right. And now 
that's the new normal for how Republicans govern everywhere that they've got power. I mean, I do think, look, I have to agree with you and that I think it's a real danger and that I think a very extreme part of the Republican Party is holding the rest of the party hostage. Mm -hmm. And that is, but look, I was actually just speaking to a bunch of women today at Yale who want to run for office. A lot of them are Republican women. They don't support these, they don't support these issues. They don't support the kind of politics that they see their party, uh, you know, driving. So uh, again, I, and, I, and what I do, I, I have found is that people are coming out of the woodwork to support Planned Parenthood. And we're fighting back in the states. We just filed suit today in Alabama against one of these bills with the ACLU. So, uh, you know, it's, it's strengthening the organization. But unfortunately, there are a lot of women who are going to pay the price uh, in the short term. I, I feel like the big picture here is that we saw 2010 was a shock. Yep. 2011 was like, oh, wow, they're keeping it up. That's 2012 right. was, hmm, I wonder how this is going to fare in the election. And now 2013, it is all bets are off and they're doing, they're actually going more extreme than they have in the last four years. And it's been pretty extreme four years. Unfortunately, I agree. Yeah. Cecile Richards, Planned Parenthood president. Um, thank you very much for being with us. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you, Rachel. Thanks. All right.